Holy Gospel of the Lord, according to St. Matthew. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Lord. This is how the birth of Jesus came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. The uh-huh. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> She was betrothed to be wed and chosen to be the mother of the Son of God. And in other versions, we hear about how she traveled to visit her cousin, Elizabeth, who was to be the mother of John the Baptist. And his birth was also foretold by an angel. And then, of course, there's the rest of the story with the starry sky and the shepherds at night and the heavenly choir coming to sing. And with no room in the end, it's a story that, that we hear in songs that get sung. Christmas cards, nativity scenes depicted. But there's a person in the story that usually doesn't get very much attention, and that's Joseph. You look at the amount of scripture that's given to telling us about Joseph, and and how many Christmas carols have Joseph in it? Not many. none, None even spring to mind immediately. It's pretty clear that he's considered to be a minor character in the Christmas story. And even though minor characters usually get a little fanfare, sometimes they have a very important role to play. And that's definitely true of Joseph. I've always been a big fan of supporting characters. Um, The one whose sole purpose is to simply help out the hero, to support the hero and um, help them do whatever it is they're charged to do. One of my favorites, of course, is Sam Wise in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. He was Frodo's best friend, and Frodo had to get the ring to Mordor, and it was Sam's job to help him do it. Every step of the way, he, he encouraged him, he fed him, he kept him from going nuts a few times, he protected him. At one point, he literally carries him in his arms to help him accomplish the task that was given him to do. He's definitely a hero for me. Because most of my adult life, I have been in supporting roles, except for these last two years. Really, this is the first time that I've been the leader. Every other time in my life, I've been a supporting character. And I've always been blessed to work for people that I admired and appreciated and really enjoyed helping to do their job well. Um, I found a lot of dignity and purpose in it. I never felt felt like I was, you know, an afterthought or anything. I, I took a lot of pride in what I did. I've also been very blessed to have a supporting character in my own life story for the past 31 years. A wonderful husband who's hiding. (laughs) (laughs) A wonderful support and encourager and protector and provider in every sense of the way. And I I am very blessed. Well, Joseph definitely had a supporting role in this story of, of Mary's and Joseph, Mary and the baby Jesus. But it's probably a bigger role than we give him credit for. Because there's so little written about it in the Bible, we don't think about all of the implications that were upon him for what he was asked to do. Because really, without his support and help, it's hard to see how Mary could have followed through and done what she was asked to do. 
she may have not been able to carry her burden. Just like Frodo couldn't have done it without Samwise, Mary couldn't have done it without Joseph. It was a very dangerous role that she was asked of. She was a very young girl. She needed someone who loved her and supported her and protected her and encouraged her every step of the way. We really don't know much about Joseph. Uh, we know that he was a descendant of King David. Um, we know that he was a carpenter. He worked in Nazareth. He was born in Bethlehem, but he moved to Nazareth at some point, and his, his job was a carpenter. But we, the Bible says one very important thing about him that really tells us a whole lot. Matthew calls him a righteous man. And that means we can expect him to always try to do the right thing by God and by others. We also know that he was betrothed to Mary. And Mary, betrothal is like engagement, but in that culture and time, betrothal was a much bigger deal than engagement. It was a very formal arrangement. Um, it was like being married, except the couple did not come together as husband and wife in physical union, because it, after a year's time, it was a period of a year for this betrothment, without any sort of physical contact, to show that the woman was in fact a virgin. It also gave them time to, for the families to meet and for the dowry to be worked out and all of that. But it was such a formal and binding agreement between the two individuals and their families that in order for it to be broken, there had to be a divorce. So it's very different than what we know of today. So they're in this betrothal <coughs> arrangement. They're getting to know each other. They're getting to know each other's families. And then in the middle of this, we don't know how far into it, she finds out she's pregnant. And she comes to Joseph and told him, and it must have just devastated him. He knew he wasn't the father. So as any natural man would think, he, she had been unfaithful to him. And it must have broken his heart. I'm sure everything he thought he knew about this young lady who was going to be his wife was just shattered. He was devastated. I mean, how could, in, in her story, she couldn't even be honest about it. She didn't have a story about an angel. <laughs> And that she, as a virgin, has become pregnant, which of course is not humanly possible. So not only is she betrayed, but now she's lying to him. I mean, kind of enter into Joseph's frame of mind for a second. I mean, that just must have, this whole world must have felt like it was coming apart. But you know, it's at this point of the story when Joseph shines most brightly. He's a righteous man, and he's caught between his desire to honor God and to honor this woman that he loves. And he wants to honor God by entering into a proper marriage and doing things according to God's standards, but he also loves Mary. And if he publicly divorces her, she's going to be labeled an adulterer. And the penalty for adultery is death. And as upset and as heartbroken as he must be, I can imagine he can't bear the thought of her having to pay that price. So he decides that the only thing he can do after the angel comes to him, the angel will come to him in a dream and confirm what Mary has said. And so he decides to, to I'm sorry, I, back, I need to back up. Rather than publicly divorce her, he decides to quietly divorce her to save her the embarrassment. But an angel comes in a dream and tells him, no, this is true. Her story is true. She is pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Take her to be your wife. And so that's what he does. And just like Mary, the angel gave Jesus the name of the child, Jesus. So that's a wonderful confirmation for him in the midst of this crazy, confusing time. He told her to take Mary home as his wife, and that's what he did. And it's important to realize that that was a big thing being asked of Joseph. Because very soon it was going to be apparent to everyone that she is pregnant. And it will be known that they're betrothed, and he will look like he is not a righteous man. He will look like he has broken the, the, the vows and the boundaries for betrothal, and he has known her before they're actually wed. So not only is Mary's character going to be stained in all of this, so is his. But, but as I said, to abandon her and to leave her to deal with this on her own, to save his own skin and reputation, was something he just couldn't bring himself to do. Adultery required death, and he was not going to allow that to happen to her. So by believing what the angel said, and by believing Mary and following through, he really showed himself to truly be a righteous man. Joseph enters this story as a supporting character, a vital character. He's her husband, he's Mary's husband, protector, encourager, provider. And even more importantly than that, 
he becomes Jesus' stepfather. He's given the privilege and the responsibility for raising the Son of God. Think about that for a moment. Anyone who becomes a parent feels a tremendous responsibility. But this is the Son of God, the Savior of the world. If you've ever seen the movie The Nativity, it's a fairly recent movie that's been put out. They do such a wonderful job of telling Joseph's, Joseph's side of the story. And there's one point where Mary and Joseph are looking at this infant Jesus just with awe and amazement. And Joseph says, I wonder if I'll ever be able to teach him anything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is God. It's incredible. So he's been given this great burden to love and to raise someone else's child. And I'm guessing that he did it well. That he took that role seriously and he did it very well. And as any adoptive, adoptive parent or step-parent can tell you, it is possible to love someone else's child as much as your own. Well, Joseph's life took a very dramatic shift that night that the angel came and told him to, to marry her. Marry her instead of the traditional ceremony where they would set up housekeeping in Nazareth and he would continue on as a carpenter. Instead, he ended up going to Bethlehem and then fleeing to Egypt. He was running from crazy, angry kings and welcoming foreign kings, bearing gifts. And watching this amazing child grow in wisdom and stature and love of the Lord. Very different life than what he thought he was signing up for. When they brought Jesus to the temple to dedicate him, as was the, the custom of the Jewish people, he watched as this older man and woman, Anna and Simeon, came forward and confirmed what the angel had told them. This tiny baby, eight days old, and these two strangers walking up confirming what the angel said, that this was the Savior of the world. And then, 12 years later, in the temple again, Jesus sitting there conversing with the rabbis and saying that he was in his father's house. Must have been a lot for Joseph to take in. I can imagine just day by day, he wonders. We don't know how long he lived. He, we don't hear about, about him after the temple story of Jesus being 12 years old. He disappears out of the story. So it's assumed that he passed away, because we do continue to hear about Mary. But we remember him as a faithful man who shepherded Jesus through his infant and childhood years, providing and protecting as a good father and husband. And his story reminds us that sometimes God asks us to do big things. Sometimes God asks us to believe things that seem impossible. Sometimes God asks us to do things that are not at all what we thought our life was going to take us in. A totally different direction. But we also know from Joseph's story that he provides confirmation and courage when he asks us to do these things. Especially to take that first step. <coughs> Mary and Joseph had plenty, plenty of angelic assurance that they were following God's will in this. Now, I've never had an angel appear to me that I know of. <laughs> But I, I can also attest that whenever God has asked me to do something big and crazy, He's given me the confirmation and the courage that I've needed. He's also given me the support that I've needed. When I felt the Lord called me into ministry and I had to go tell Doug that his life was about to change, um, I fully expected him to say, you're nuts. This is not going to happen. And yet I... I got an affirmation that has continued to this day. Blesses me greatly. God does provide for us the support that we need and the, and the encouragement and the companionship as we do the tasks that he gives us to make. Um, he's done that all along. Look at Moses. He had Aaron and Miriam, his brother and sister, for the huge task he had of delivering God's people from Egypt. Mary had Joseph, as we just heard in that story. The disciples had each other. Jesus sent them out two by two. He didn't send them out one at one a time. Mm -hmm. Paul took Timothy and Silas with him when he did his missionary journeys. And Jesus always had people with him as well. In his earthly ministry, he always had people that came alongside him and supported him, men and women, together. So the role of supporting character is never a minor one in God's story. There's no small parts. Each one of us has a role to fill. And if you find yourself in a lead position, make sure you've got that supporting cast with you. Make sure there are people alongside you because it will keep you humble and it will keep you accountable. 
And if your role is the supporting one, do your best. Do it with honor and dignity. And know that even if no one else notices, God does. We weren't meant to labor alone, but to work together as the body of Christ for his honor and glory and not ours. So this Christmas, when you read the story again, I hope you think of Jesus in a new, I'm sorry, I hope you think of Joseph in a new light. And thank God for this humble man, this courageous man, this faithful man. He believed God and trusted the impossible. And he allowed himself to be a supporting character in God's story. And we've lit the, the love candle today. And it's, it's appropriate because this is a love story, isn't it? A love story between Mary and Joseph. But it's also a love story within a love story because of the love story that Jesus' birth is to the whole world. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son. He loved this fallen and rebellious world and us fallen and rebellious creatures so much that he was willing to take on human flesh and become Emmanuel, God with us. To live and walk among us and then to die and rise again so that we could know him for all eternity. It's the greatest story there is and it's the greatest gift. Let's pray. Lord, help us to see this story with the eyes of wonder and awe that it deserves. We hear it every year, Lord. Help us not to become desensitized at all to the awe and the majesty and the miracle of it. Thank you for each person that was asked to play a part in bringing Jesus into this world. For Mary's faithfulness, Lord. For Joseph's faithfulness. For all the people who came alongside them. Lord, help us to take our roles just as seriously whenever you ask us to either lead or support to look to you for help and to look for those that you have placed in our lives to help us. Thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.